Hey everyone and welcome back to our problem solving series. I'm going to cover the problem that I posted on April 5th, 2020. Hope everyone's doing okay. Hope you like my new whiteboard. I set it up so that you can visualize it and see things more clearly. Anyway, so we have two radicals that are being subtracted on this side and we have a radical expression on the right side. The way we want to get rid of it is we are going to have to square both sides because we want to essentially get rid of the one on the right side, okay? And we're going to square both sides. Now, on the right side, it's pretty simple. It's just going to become 4x minus 27. Now, the left side is going to be a little more interesting. Why? Because we have two radicals being subtracted. Most people would instantly say that, oh, we're just going to do x plus 9 minus x plus 2. That is not correct. Okay, we don't want to do that. Why? Because the radicals are being added together. So what we need to do is we need to actually write this. We want to visualize this a little better. Keep in mind that this is essentially that right there. Okay? Now how do we multiply? A lot of people are going to call this the FOIL method, but it's really called distribution property because you're distributing everything to each value. But again, we're just going to use the FOIL method. I'm going to use multiply the first values. That's just going to become x plus 9 because the radicals are the same. Then we have the outside, which becomes root x plus 9 times root x plus 2. Inside, minus root x plus 2 times root x plus 9. Then we have the last, and that's going to become positive x plus 2. And that's equal to the right side. Okay? Looks messy, but trust me, it's going to work out just fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the like terms. I notice that there's an x here and an x there. That becomes 2x. The 9 and the 2 can become 11. And these two are the same values, so I'm just going to combine them. So that means that I have two of the same like terms, and that's equal to the right side there. Very nice, right? Okay, let's subtract the two to the other side and the 11 to the other side. I get negative 2 root x plus 9 root x plus 2 is equal to 2x minus 38. Now, before I do anything here, I want to get rid of this negative 2. It's just going to make this a lot easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by negative 2. So I'm left with root x plus 9 times root x plus 2 is equal to negative x plus 19. Now, how did I get that? I divided 2x by negative 2, which gave me negative x, and negative 38 divided by negative 2, which gave me positive 19. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and write this on the top, erase everything here so that hopefully you're keeping up. I don't know if you're writing this on a piece of paper or you're just, you know, you can rewind the video whenever you like. Anyway, it is Sunday right now. I hope you guys are staying positive, getting ready for the week. Alright, so here I have that bottom line. Nothing new here. Okay, that's what I have. Now, what would the next step be? I'm going to get rid of these radicals. So I'm going to square both sides again. And this time, because these are being multiplied, not subtracted, not added, I can actually distribute the power to both of them to get rid of the radical. So that becomes x plus 9 times x plus 2 is equal to, look at this one, tricky. And again, a lot of people are going to think, oh, this is x squared plus 19 squared, which is 361. No, don't want to do that. Again, why? Because we have two values being multiplied and subtracted together. Again, this just becomes natural once you continue to practice your math, um, your algebra, essentially. But it's just a rule that we have to know, okay? There's a couple explanations that I can go with, but it'll take a while to do maybe another YouTube video that I can do. Who knows? Anyway, on the left side, let's go ahead and FOIL or distribute that out. It becomes x squared plus 11x plus 18. The right side, let's go ahead and FOIL that out. That becomes x squared minus 19x minus 19x plus 361. Now, I 
notice that I did the full foil method I wanted to show you down on the right side. On this one, I kind of already did the math in my head. Honestly, that was just uh, instinct and a habit, so I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and simplify the right side. On this one, I get x squared. These two can be combined to become 3 e x plus 361. Okay. I have x squared on the left and the right. Let's try to bring and combine some of these values so I bring it to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the x squared, the 11x, and the 18 to the right side by subtracting it. squared and the 18 and because I did it on the left side I'm going to do it to the right side. So I'm going to x squared minus 11x minus 18. Nice. Okay. These values are all going to cancel out which is great. It's what I wanted. So I get 0 is equal to x squared minus x squared cancels out. It's actually really nice. That helps us a lot. Uh, negative 38x minus 11x negative 49x and then this becomes positive 343. All right. How do I solve for x? Just like any you know, two-step equation, let's bring the negative or the 343 to the other side. And I have negative 343 over 49x. Man, I wish I had just a little bit more space for that. I divide negative 49 to both sides. Four minus root nine is three equals twenty-eight minus twenty-seven is root one, which is just one. So one equals one. Yeah, buddy, that's exactly what we want. Anyway, it looks difficult, but honestly, take your time. If you can complete the first few steps of the problem, you're one step closer to becoming a mathematician. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys soon.